on it. Would you be totally opposed to any Premier League competitive games leaving the UK? Or are you open to it in some way, shape or form? Because you can't stand in the way of progress. There is huge amounts of money that come into the Premier League because of a global audience. And if you don't do it, you better be sure your neighbour John's going to do it. And what I mean by that, La Liga, the Italian league, who lag behind the Premier League for revenue and appeal, will step into those markets in an attempt to try and make them more appealing. And what I would like to see... And this is where I'm going to do the mic drop and you should have stayed till the end. I, as a football fan, am not opposed to this if you get rid of the 3 p.m. blackout. Because if you're going to give America or another country some of our Premier League games, they already get to watch 3 o'clock games as it is. So you're, you're taking more away from the English game to the international audience that already gets to watch games that we can't. So I find myself making a video about this man once again and to the outsider looking in it probably does look like i've got a bit of an unhealthy obsession with him but i can promise you that is not the case he just says a lot of silly things and the videos that i make about him saying these silly things get a decent amount of views so when he says another silly thing like he did just this week i think it's a perfect opportunity to make another video on it don't you all agree I definitely do agree with that. But before we do get in to what Mark Goldbridge said, which you, you've either probably already seen on Twitter or you saw at the start of the video, unless you skip to the timestamp to just listen to me speak, right? Before we get into all of that, please do like the video if you enjoyed and comment down below your thoughts on Mark Goldbridge, you know, his statement and also his online persona as a whole. What, what do you think of Mark? And also subscribe to the channel because we have recently just hit 400 subscribers and your support is very much appreciated. I remember at the start of this calendar year, uh, calendar year, I only had 90 subscribers and now I have like 406 as of recording this video and I think, you know, your support is very much appreciated. Like that's a crazy amount of subscribers to earn in just, just a few months. So, so thank you guys a lot. I, I really do appreciate it. And if it's the first video of mine you are watching, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Like the one I made where I talked about Pep Guardiola's biggest mistake as a footballing manager. But with all that being said, let's get into today's video where we're going to talk about Mark Goldbridge and his opinions on Premier League games being played outside of England. Or should I say the UK? Because... Premier League games have already been played outside of England because, you know, as some of you some of you may not know this, right? But Premier League games have been played in Wales when Cardiff and Swansea were both in the Premier League and Wales is its own country. And, you know, so a lot of you might be thinking, Nathan, why are you patronising us with this information? That is, that's common knowledge. Well, unfortunately, there are people I know in my personal life that don't think that Wales is its own country. Despite living right next to it, Obviously, with me living in Bristol, living right next to it, literally living like half an hour's drive away from the country, people do not seem to realise that it is a country. So, you know, that just shows where we're at as a society and the fact that our schools definitely do need to do better. But anyway, let's actually like let's actually talk about what Mark said, because, you know, there is a lot there is a lot he said in, in that short like minute clip that I, I played at the start of the video and. You know, there is obviously the idea to play Premier League games outside of the UK and play them in America and places like that because obviously there's big money in America. America is one of the biggest places to take any sporting event to, right? There's a lot of big names there, big name celebrities. There's a lot of money in it, right? There's a lot of money of doing any event in America, right? And Premier League football is no exception. There's also a lot of a large fan base in America with it being such a big country. So, you know, that is why a lot of these preseason tours happen in America or they happen in Asia. Uh, most um, usually it will be in Japan, right? Um, a lot of these um, countries like America, Japan, South Korea, they, they have a big, there's a big audience for, for football over there, right? Believe it or not, especially when it comes to America. But there is a big audience for, for Premier League football over there with a lot of fans uh, from these countries being fans of Premier League clubs, whether that is because international players such as Shimin Son for Korea and Jisun Park um, as well, like playing in the Premier League at points, 
um, meaning that their the fans of that um, national team go and support their players um, at club level, or whether it's just you know um, a lot of celebrities and stuff in America will just get into football because they're a big name and they've met a lot of footballers while networking, right? So you know there is there's a big market for the sport, especially the Premier League with it being the biggest league in the world. There is a big um, market for it in these countries, right? But that is why the preseason tours exist, so that fans in these countries get to go and see their team play, get get to see their team play without having to spend extreme amounts of money traveling across the world, right? You know, it is um, it's a win-win situation in in that sense. International fans get to go see their their team play. Uh, home fans that go to every game that live in Manchester or in the UK don't miss out on any um, competitive football. It is, I think that's a decent compromise, right? But what what Mark said and the idea he's talking about is where the league know that there's money to be made if they go and play Premier League games in these countries, right? Which I think is a big no-go, right? Because the Premier League is the English Premier League, right? Although, again, like I said, there are Welsh teams that play in the English Premier League. It's mostly the English Premier League, with most of the games being played in England and all of the games being played in the UK, right? Fans usually have to travel a maximum of like four to six hours to get to a game and, and all of that can be done by driving, right? You know, it's, it's all domestic travel. You you can get a plane, you can get a car, you can take a train, you can walk, you can probably even get a boat. Like, you know what I mean? You can do all these things to, to get to these games and it is relatively affordable for most people to go to at least a handful of games a season if they, if they, support, if they support a team, right? Um... But if you're moving games to, like, if you're just moving one game a season to America, right, and that brings in a lot of money, that incentivizes is the league more to move all of more even more games to um, America, like season on season, until it's no longer the English Premier League. It is just the Premier League, and it is all played in America with teams based in America that just have the names of English cities on them, right? So it is definitely not in the fans' best interest for this to happen because a lot of us can see that it won't just be one-off games, right? And a one-off game, a lot of us could probably stomach. We, we wouldn't like the idea, but we, we would be able to get over the fact that a one-off game would be played in America, right? But we know that it won't stop at a one-off game and they will take it too far and we will lose the Premier League as we know it, right? You know, a lot of people, even like Mark, will complain about the state of the Premier League. But realistically, we all love the league with all of its faults, right? So so there's that, right? You, you don't want to lose the integrity of the league. You don't want to lose the identity of the league and have it, you know, just, just not be this, be a shell of what it used to be. And basically just be MLS too, right? The, the MLS, but it's got richer teams and the teams have fancy exotic names from different countries right that that that's what it that's basically what it would become right and if you're against the super league you should be against this if if and you know if you're for the super league then you're probably also for this right but that's not the only like problematic thing mark says in all of this he thinks that he would definitely be all for games being played in this uh in other countries one because if we don't do it, then our competitors like the Bundesliga, La Liga, maybe not the Bundesliga actually, probably just La Liga, Syria, maybe even Ligue 1, um, would go and um, take up this opportunity and earn more money and become better financially than the Premier League, right? Which, you know, I can understand, I can understand that concern. But at the same time, is it really all about which money league makes the most money? If our league suddenly became the poorest out of all the top five leagues would we then suddenly not enjoy the league same way that we all sit here and call league earn a farmers league right but are are the fans of of league and teams like really like that bothered by the state of their league in the sense of they at least get to go watch their team play week in week out the championship isn't as good as the premier league i know plenty plenty of people that support championship teams obviously with me living in the city that has a championship team and also has a League One team. Like, you know, I know people that support these teams and they might not play the best football, 
they, they might not even be any good, but they enjoy going, socialising and being able to spend time around their favourite club because it's something they've done their whole life, right? So the money really isn't the be-all and end-all. To us, anyway. To, to the league, to the owners, probably is, right? But if, if enough pushback was caused, as we obviously saw with the Super League, if, if we created enough of a pushback, we could probably, you know, put a stop to this idea. When when it comes into like when they try to actually put in motion, you could probably put a stop to it for a good few years anyway, right? But he also goes on to talk about the three pm blackout, right? And the three pm blackout is something that definitely does inconvenient me as someone that supports Manchester City but doesn't live in Manchester. Shock horror! I do not live in Manchester, right? I do not go to every game with a season ticket. I will go and see City. When tickets either are available to me, I'm able to get a ticket. I'm able to get time off work or, or time free of responsibility. So I've got the time to travel up there, watch a game, probably stay in a hotel, travel back the next day, right? And, you know, this one I've got time, right? I will go and watch City when I can because it is not the luxury that I have um, to be able to do it every week, unfortunately. And yes, you can call me a glory supporter for that. You know, it's probably well within your right to say that. That I should probably support a Bristol team, but you know, I I don't support a Bristol team, despite spending most of my life in Bristol. I support Manchester City because that is the team that I fell in love with, for better or for worse, mostly for better there. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I don't get to watch City live every week, and I get to watch City on TV right when 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 they play an early kickoff, when they play on a Sunday, when they play on a Friday, when they play on a Monday right. I I get to see see these um. I get to see these games. I obviously don't get to watch the 3 p.m. games on TV, which, again, it does inconvenience me. It is a bit of an annoying rule, but I can understand why this rule is in place. Because it's to protect the, the footballing pyramid as a whole. Because I know plenty of people that support two teams. Obviously, living in Bristol, where we've there's a championship team. Obviously, there's a, there's a League One team, right? There's two teams in the city. Um, most people that support these teams, and I, I mostly know Bristol City fans because of, like the parts of Bristol that I socialise in are, are heavily, uh, um, you know, Bristol City dominated. But I see a lot of people, and the most common one is either they're Bristol City fans, but they also support United, or they're Bristol City fans and they also support Liverpool. They're the two most common right, ones you'll see. So let's say Liverpool play West Ham on the Saturday, 3pm. And these people that support Liverpool and City, Bristol City obviously, um, they, they have the choice to watch that, sit at home and watch that game. A Premier League game, a high-level game with, with some of the best players in the world. Or they can go to Ashton Gate and watch Bristol City Coventry, which is obviously a lesser... Um, what is it? It's a, it's a lesser like quality of football. They would probably pick the sitting in the comfort of their own home, watching the team they support, and also, you know, watch better quality football, right? And that is the case with, unfortunately, that is the case with a lot of people, right? Um, the, if they had the chance to sit at home and watch Premier League football, they probably would not go to games uh, and watch either their local team, which may even be a non-professional team, or go and watch their local team, which is a professional team that's played in the low divisions, right? And some of these smaller clubs really do rely on the, the revenue they make on a match day, whether that be from tickets, food, drink, like you know merchandise etc that they really do rely on on the money they make from these type of things so to be able to take a good number of people um of people that attend these games away by broadcasting premier league football at 3 p.m when most of these teams will obviously play you know would definitely be unfair and i can understand even though the rule inconveniences me and you know if I was being selfish, I would definitely want to see the rule disappear. And it was a godsend in lockdown when I could watch every game on TV. You know, I understand why the rule's in place. And I am all for the rule being in place. Because I care about the greater good of football. Um, you know, um, I, I care, care about the greater good of football. You know, everybody's footballing experience. Being able to follow, follow their club. And, you know, the fact that... If if I got to watch my team on TV every day, uh, every weekend, some people might not even have a club to go to. You know that is that is quite that's quite quite a sad and uh, quite a scary thing to think about. So I'm definitely all for the three pm rule, uh, blackout rule. 
obviously Mark isn't, and, and he's always made it clear that he, he's not very fond of this rule, and he, he wants it scrapped, because obviously he makes his money by watching Man United from, from his studio, and you know, he watches all the games from his studio, live streams it, and that's how he makes his money. Fair enough, but to, to be against the rule, I think you can't, you can't, I don't think you can say you're a fan of the, the football as a game, as a sport, if you're against the rule. You can, like, Mark can be a Man United fan and be against the rule, but I don't think he could be a football fan and be against the rule. I don't, I don't, if that makes sense, right? That might not make sense to some of you, it might make sense to some of you, but I know what I'm trying to say. Like, so I think he's stupid for being against the 3 p.m. blackout, right? Because, you know, it protects the greater good of the game. Um, and you'll probably see a lot less talent. Um, be scouted and, and, and you wouldn't have people like Vardy um, etc like burst onto the scene the way they did and, and, and come from what they came from because less there would be less eyes on these on these lesser teams playing because there'd be more eyes on being able to watch the Premier League right so you know he's, he's an idiot for being against that rule but he's also an idiot for wanting and he's someone that always talks about the integrity of the league the integrity of football um, talks about how my club city are, you know, ruining football by having zero integrity, being cheats, etc., etc., having too much money, whatever. Right? You could list off every issue he's had with City, whether that is um, like a, f a fair criticism of the club or it is just cope. You know, I'm not here to talk about that. But what I'm saying is, he always talks about the integrity of the league and the integrity of football, right? But what integrity is there? in moving Premier League games to a different country, a different continent. Like, where's the integrity in that? Like, there's just not. It, it's the same as if we... It'd be literally the same as if we were bribing the refs. Like, it's literally just putting money bef before anything else. And that's why I have an issue with it, and that's why I have an issue with what he said. But, you know, with all that being said, let me, let me know down below if you think I was right. Like, if you think that I was right to disagree with everything that he said or if I'm just being too harsh and that what he said he has a fair point in saying that we should probably we should allow you know games in America to be played so that some American fans get to see their team play live but also take away the 3 p.m. blackout rule because American fans can sit and watch every game of their favorite Premier League team live on TV whereas in England where the teams are based fans can't watch every game of their like club season on TV so you know let me know if he has a point um, or you know if you think that I was right and he's just just talking nonsense for the sake of talking nonsense but again with all that being said please do like the video if you enjoyed remember subscribe to the channel if you haven't already your support really does mean a lot and check out the rest of these on the channel by clicking the channel button down below and just scrolling through the catalogue of videos. There's plenty of videos there for you to watch and it might even encourage you to subscribe even more. With all that being said, I've been Nathan. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Shut down cases. They belly dots to the car, see faces. Chasing, chasing the bad guy, chasing. You don't want to be the one like Ace and like Tate. Trying to turn them out, wasted. Aye, Aye. Tell about bitch, come break it, break it. Body come mad, come shake it. Shit, then get back to the basics, basics. Bro, down, shut down cases. They belly dots to the car.